Kia ora kato katoa. Welcome everyone. Welcome to Innovative Methods in Market Research. Digital Data Collection via TikTok by Ana Maria Areos, the Director and CEO of Sensata UX Research, as well as Senior research, Researcher Gabriel Camago. I am Marina Sanka, your co-host and the AES convener of Aotearoa New Zealand. I will monitor the chat function um, throughout the seminar for any questions you may have. Hey, you may have. Sorry. Um, if you can please keep um, yourselves muted, um, that, would be, that would be wonderful. Um, when there is an appropriate moment for questions, feel free to um, um, raise your hand. Uh, but however, before we start, um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands which we all come from. I'm speaking from Wellington, Aotearoa, and I acknowledge our leaders, past, present and emerging. And today we are very fortunate to have a visually enticing presentation by Anna Maria and Gabriel. Um, Anna Maria has over a decade of experience in behavioral science and cultural studies. Um, she pioneered Sensata UX research during the COVID-19 pandemic and her market research company has successfully grown and collected over 1.5 million surveys in over 30 nations. They specialize in providing an enjoyable user experience with nonverbal um, interaction types, increasing response rates way more than traditional surveys do. So thank you, Anna Maria and Gabriel, for your time today. We really look forward to learning from you. Over to you. Thank you, Marie, for having us here. We're very glad to share with you our experience in this couple of years that we, and what we've learned so far with this new paradigm. So I'm going to share. Are you watching uh, my screen? Yes, yeah. Okay, so we, we call this, uh, actually, this was, <laughs> the, uh, I hope there's no misunderstanding because this is the, the, the title of this presentation. It, we, we, we're talking here about the TikTok era, with, which is maybe some of you are familiar with TikTok, which uh, is a social uh, network that uh, taught people to, to expect uh, entertainment experience of at last 30 seconds. So the, the attention span of human beings in the TikTok era is around 30 seconds. So we, uh, but the traditional paradigms of social research are very far from that approach. So we are, we are making some important steps towards collecting data massively in this era. And we really believe that what we have to share can be very valuable for social researchers all around the world. So uh, it's, it's um, this is a fact that every organization needs quality data, but the speed at which the world is changing is way faster than the speed at which social research or research in general is, is changing. And collecting good quality data it's not always easy. You probably are familiar with this. I, we didn't have time to, to know your backgrounds, but you're probably familiar with data collection and uh, decreasing response rates all around the world, especially among the millennials or millennials populations. So we, uh, we know as a fact that people find service boring, they demand a lot of cognitive effort. Traditional service is used to have sometimes types of questions that can be had. They are very much based on words, categories, text that is cognitively, cognitively demanding. And as you might know, surveys are expensive. They it cost a lot of money. So Sometimes you see here to the left, uh, a, a picture of a, a digital survey. And this, this is a traditional survey in a digital way. But it's, if you see this, this feels 
more similar to an exam than um, to an entertainment experience, which is what people expect when they're online in the TikTok era. So in this, in this era, people will give you five minutes probably, but not 20 as before. So if you see maybe market research or some customer experience research can uh, be done with uh, five or 10 questions, but when you're doing proper, profound social research, you need to do a lot of questions to even just in demographic, you need like 10 questions then you need to you have several modules you need a lot of questions so time is the key variable to to having a successful data collection in this era so we i was myself a social researcher for the last 10 years and i used to suffer with this uh, survey experience it was frustrating to uh, pay a lot of money, wait a lot of time because usually data collection took months to be completed and sometimes uh, information that the data collected was not satisfying. It was sm small samples, or I mean uh, the biggest sample that you can pay, which is normally very small. So we were wondering if there, there's another way and that's how Sensata was born as the fastest data collection platform for organizations and with a specific uh, emphasis in culture and behavior research, which is the backgrounds that uh, I come from. And I want you to experience by yourself our, our paradigm. This is a QR code. If you have your phone there, you can scan the code and do a, a, a sample, a very, very short present uh, um, survey. It won't take more than two minutes. If someone can't get the link, maybe we can share it here on the chat. Anna, are we ready to um, move on? You ready? Okay, that's great. So I think that you you can you could you were able to to experience some of the features, and we will we will talk about that more in depth. Here we have a video uh, that I, I like sharing because it, this is the way we started before the pandemic. We actually did data collection in person with this type of uh, devices, and this is a, a project. It was an impact evaluation for children at school. It was a, a sustainable mobility project that we were evaluating. And the, the interesting thing here is that these type of uh, interfaces are known by 
everyone. I mean, uh, children from, I think, two year old to people 80 year old, they all know how to interact with uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, smartphones in general. So we, uh, uh, the big insight that we have is people are, are all day long clicking on, on a screen. Uh, why if we leverage on that ability to collect data in an engaging, fun, and fast way. And it actually worked after, uh, well, when the pandemic started in 2020, we, we launched, uh, uh, it was a survey about mental health during the pandemic. How, how, the, how do you feel? Uh, how does the, the lockdown affected your em emotions and, and mental health? And it became uh, viral. We didn't expect it to happen, but we got over, over 400,000 surveys of that single survey with no advertising, no, no, I mean, no intentional efforts for that to happen. And it showed us the opportunity, so, uh, no survey responses. And it was only one, one questionnaire and we got uh, 400,000 survey responses because people at the end of the, of the survey, they were able to share it with people and they did. So it, it was insightful, like people can even find surveys as something valuable so that they share it with others. It was, it was really mind blowing because traditionally people are like reluctant to answer surveys. Sometimes you even have to pay them. So what, we started a, a new business model in that moment and we do, social survey, social research surveys, which are not paid. I mean, people answer them for free. And we advertise on social media or we use different uh, advertising methods. And that way is how we have collected this much surveys so far. We have even work in South Africa, Nigeria, India, Latin America, North America. We haven't worked in Australia or New Zealand so far, but we hope so. We hope to. So um, the uh, I think that the, the the magic of this is to be able to answer the most possible question in the least possible time, and we we do this by re reducing cognitive effort, limiting the number of options, reducing the number of words and exploring non-verbal question types. This is really challenging, but it's part of the, um, this is part of the, I think this question, maybe we can respond, answer to it later when we address the security and the, the things. So uh, the possibility of capturing non-verbal question types and information is a, is part of the paradigm of social media and you know the opportunities that come from from smartphones. Before in traditional surveys, it wasn't as as easy because people were not familiar with emojis or this kind of symbol. But now everyone is, so now we can do these type of things. So regarding survey times. 90% of our users can respond up to 30 questions in three minutes. And that's uh, uh, because we focus on the automatic system. You probably know this. Maybe you are familiar with Daniel Kahneman, uh, the, the author of Think Fast, Think Slow, Nobel Prize in economics. And this whole idea of the two different systems, the, the fast system and the slow system, we humans tend to put our uh, 90 per, 95% of our time, we are in the fast system. We like doing things that are simple, instinctive, effortless, and conscious. This is totally different to what traditional surveys do. Traditional surveys are complex, require that people think, uh, demand cognitive effort, logic analysis, 
and um, it normally takes more time, but not, not only the time, but people sometimes get bored. They quit the task, and that's why we have so high, I mean, not we, but uh, social research are having very low response rates currently because people don't want to do that type of surveys anymore. And how do we do this? How, how do we keep users in the automatic system? How do we keep our surveys fast? This is, this is part science and part art because we, we, use, we analyze the time per question of each of the questions. We, we have a very, very careful process of creating each question, start from the variable, then we, uh, or sometimes when we even work with researchers, we ha they have already maybe the, the questionnaires, but we help them to simplify the cognitive uh, effort in the surveys. We simplify the number of words. We sometimes divide questions. For example, sometimes you have a multiple selection question. You have seven options and people can choose all of them. But uh, in our experience, it doesn't happen. It's very uncommon that someone chooses seven out of seven. Sometimes it's just uh, laziness or you don't know. But what we found, for example, is that it's faster in terms of the total time. If you ask seven different questions, yes or no, than if you ask people to choose seven uh, among seven things. Because you have to read the whole seven things first, then think if you have these or not. So what we found, for example, is that it reduces the time in if you separate, divide the seven options in seven questions. This is just an example, but that's what we do. We look at the time and we try to keep every question below the threshold of 10 seconds per question. This is just an, an example here. So uh, the many researchers believe that doing online surveys, and this is more common every day now with after the pandemic, everything is more virtual, digital. And people believe that is you just take your questionnaire, the one that you always used, and you just put it online and send it to people. But we believe that it, it should be actually totally different piloting how you approach people who are already online because the the experience that they're having in every platform is totally different to what traditional surveys do. And, uh, and I think this all uh, uh, belongs to the economy of attention. And you're probably familiar with this concept. Today, everyone is competing for people's attention, uh, not only products and services, but also NGO, government, news. Everyone is trying to capture people's attention. So we, we want to capture their attention and their time to, to answer a survey. We need to, to talk and approach them in the language that, that they use. This is an example of what should not be done. This is an example of a survey that I got this email in March this year. It's like four paragraphs. I already spent like five minutes reading only the, 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 the email to ask me to please answer a 20 minute uh, survey. Even if they pay me, I think it's like, I don't want to read the email. I, I actually didn't read the email. I noticed that they were paying for, for answering the, that survey like one month too late. But anyway, so this is our paradigm, which is very different. We advertise something on one social media or on WhatsApp or the social network that people are already using. And then we uh, get them through one experience like this that you already experience yourself, which is very simple and engaging. For us, it's, it's really exciting to see how people uh, like actually, the, how can they interact with our platform for seven minutes, 50 clicks or 70 clicks. And it has allowed us to, to run very interesting research 
for NGOs, universities, or private companies as well. Also, we created this com a concept of survey test or survey quiz is similar to the one you experienced. And in sometimes, not always, sometimes we just say like, hey, please help us answering these two minute surveys. But many times we prefer to launch a question that is interesting or relevant for people to answer like, uh, how healthy are you eating? Or do you know your financial profile? Or how, uh, what's your risk of getting COVID? You know, something like, like this. It's a question that starts like a conversation. And this is what people find at the end, like, a, uh, like a symbolic incentive to spend their time, respond honestly, and then even share it with other people because it was a, a, an interesting or fun experience and they also found valuable the, the profile that we gave them at the end. The, we, we built this profile specifically for every survey based on the answers of, of the participants. So if they, uh, we, we normally have two axes and then we create at least nine profiles. So sometimes people really, really get value from our service. Mm, this is, uh, well, I think in this part, we can talk more about security data and Gabriel is gonna do that. Yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm gonna start by answering some of these questions uh, that, that I've seen on the chat. Uh, first, um, what what are our data security policies? Um, so we have um, the data is encrypted in our server and it's also transported using a secure layer. Um, we usually keep the data for a period of time, sometimes agreed with the customer uh, for our own, you know, having a backup. Uh, but that could also be agreed with with the with the client in some sense if, if, if the client needs it to be erased one month or immediately after data collection is done, that could also be done. Um, and that's kind of like our policies. Uh, in terms of where our data is stored, I'm checking with the development team, but I think uh, our server is in the US because we mainly work in Latin America. That's where less lag we have. Uh, I'm not sure if we could develop something, uh, but I think it's, it is possible to develop something where for that survey, it could go to a different cluster. I would have to check with, with development and, and I'm still waiting for an answer on that. But yeah, we use uh, US servers because that's what, you know, it's better for us since we mainly work in Latin America. Um, okay. Uh, there's there's another question that I could also answer right now. Mark asked for university type surveys. How do you uh, shorten the ethics or in the US, the IRB sort of uh, uh, forms? We uh, It depends on the university policies. We have been able to agree on having one short paragraph and then a link that sends to a longer um, to a longer uh, website that people can check. Uh, that short paragraph has to be decided with the university and that can also be done and set up according to, you know, the client's needs. It is something that in some cases uh, reduces response rates, but I think it's designed to do that, right? Because it, it is uh, an agreement where people have to, you know, be aware of what's going on. So uh, it, it sometimes increases the time that it takes to reach a minimum survey. Yeah, also um, the, sometimes the the... The, cons the informed consent can be downloaded to, to the device where people are answering. Oh, and there's yes. another question about time, how long it takes. How, oh yeah, uh, give me a second. Uh, a development just answered. We can configure to um, save the data in a different server, uh, but that has a cost in the terms that some features might not be available. Um, so it, it, I, I it think, could be sorry, done. Gabriel, 
I think the question was about how long it takes to develop. Yeah. And so going back to the question on, on or where the data is stored. So we can configure it to be stored in a different place, uh, but it, it, it has a cost in terms of uh, what the, um, what features might be available for the platform. Uh, in terms of how long it takes, uh, it, it depends, Anna, but I, we've been able to launch things in like a couple of weeks when it's something short. Uh, and, and, and we have also been able to collect data um, pretty quickly, arrive at a minimum sample. But that depends a lot on the questionnaire length, on how clear the research is uh, by the customer. So we, we, we we've also have projects that have taken two or three months between uh, translating the questionnaire to our paradigm and then uh, collecting data. But we can actually be uh, work very quickly. Uh, okay, so let's let's keep going. So real time monitoring, we we can we provide this sort of dashboard that presents um, how the survey data collection is going in real time. So you can uh, check this and see how many people are. Uh, being collected, where are they coming from, how long is it taking, some of the questions. Um, and this allow us to be uh, maybe checking uh, quotas, if that's uh, something that's important for, for the customer, uh, checking that uh, we are actually getting the people that we want to get. And it, it just gives some peace of mind and, and see how that's going. Um, I think we can keep going, Anna, please. Yeah, I think here it's interesting to see the numbers. We uh, This is a real survey that we did in April, and you can see the dates. It goes from the 4th of April to the 28th almost. We collected 29,000 surveys on in that period. So it, it's very fast if you compare with traditional data collection times. Yeah. We, we have also been able to, one big concern with this with this kind of data collection is um, data quality, of course. We need to be sure of uh, compliance, of non-manipulation, and we've been able to uh, develop some technology and algorithms that, that, that um, allow us to identify attempts uh, of manipulation. If there's a, like a political topic, uh, we've also been able to detect bots, uh, and with, with times, we can also check if it's uh, non-compliant or inattentive users. We, we've come to know how long a question should take for someone to actually read it and not just answer because they want to get to the end. Um, so we, we have developed technology to ensure that we have high quality data um, because it is something that we really care about. We, we not only want to get fast data, but we want it to be good too. Um, our platform not only includes the ability to collect regular surveys, but we can include survey experiments, um, which allows you to test casual hypotheses. Uh, so we could have experiments kind of like priming experiments where you uh, give some information before and then uh, randomize who see what information. We also can have A-B tests of different messages. We can have choice experiments or discrete choice experiments or conjoined experiments. There's different language in different, in different disciplines. Uh, we have that developed in our platform. Um, so we, we can randomize the order of questions, the uh, amount of uh, response options. If you want to do a list experiment, um, we can randomize a lot of things inside. Um, would you be sharing the comments in the chat? Um, and this, this is this is really, I think it's a really useful feature in, in market research and in social research in general uh, to not only have observational data, but actual causal data. So we have here an example of a choice experiment. Uh, this is just a, an experiment that we did to be able to measure how much people uh, is blaming uh, different entities or institutions for who for 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 not eating well um, and we randomize the two options that people see and based on that we can actually estimate uh, 
who is to blame we also this is like a this would be a conjoined experiment with only one attribute uh, but we can have a conjoined experiment with two or three attributes there is some trade-off here normally conjoined experiments um normally conjoined experiments have like a lot of attributes we try to keep it short because as you know we, we like to people not having to think a lot and get bored and just quit our survey. So we, we try to keep just two or three attributes maximum and have very short descriptions. Um, so there is a trade off there, but we do believe that it ensures higher quality data. Yeah, I think here the, 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 the contrafactual of this type of question is that normally uh, people uh, surveys ask people to order several things like how do you rank these five things and that's a very difficult question for people cognitively to do like if i ask you rank these five uh, types of food or rank your favorite whatever it, it, it's cognitively difficult so this way we simplify the cognitive effort and at the end we have a much more interesting analysis of the and, and and information that is closer to behavior than just uh, opinion. Yeah, so this allows us to rank something without having people actually having to rank that. Um, and 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 in this case, we were able to see that most people blame individuals uh, for why they eat wrong. Um, yeah, um, Anna, do you want to answer those questions about the social media? I can't, I can't because I'm, I'm sharing the screen. Oh, I, okay. I Sorry, uh, but I, I'll try, but you can keep going. Yeah, so here's uh, another example of uh, two different messages uh, and different designs that we tested. Um, we can uh, randomize who sees which message and which design, and we can also have a control group that sees no none of them, and then ask a question uh, about whatever is related to this. So in this case, it was um, a, a slogan used for a pro-choice campaign um, where they uh, we have different kind of messages, and then we 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 asked people if they were supportive of abortion in different cases or in any case or never. And we were able to, to see which message actually increased support for this, um, for, for, for abortion policies. Um, and this can be done for anything, anything that's graphic or text, uh, we, can, we are able to randomize it as, as an A-B test. Um, And just to conclude, we, we, we've come to realize that surveys have come to ask a lot from respondents, right? They expect a lot from the respondents and they don't give that much back in return. It's not very fun to do a survey. It takes your time uh, and it takes effort. So we have come to, uh, to, to we develop a platform that makes it fun, that makes it fast and that makes it, uh, Actually, in some cases, it can actually give you something like saying, hey, you're not eating very well, so how about you try to follow new habits? Um, so, or, or you, you, you have a, a, I don't know, a financial profile that uh, puts you at risk on something. Uh, so we give something back and that has ensured us to, um, to be able to collect a massive amount of data uh, faster than traditional surveys. Uh, making it fun, making it fast, making it smart for people is how we ensure this. Um, virality, we also have the ability for people to, you know, you finish the survey and if you like it, you just hit a link and it will send you to WhatsApp uh, uh, or Facebook and you can post it in, in or send it to whoever you want. And that's how we've been able to create these viral surveys. Um, yeah, yeah so, however, maybe, oh, sorry, sorry, Gabriel. No, go ahead. No, I, I was just uh, saying that this is 
we we have talked a lot about the viral and service through social media. However, we not only work on, on that platform, sometimes this, this method and this platform also works for in-person data collection, for collection, data collection through email, because in general, the promise is less time and a, a fun experience and it works, it have, work for us uh, it has worked for us in in every latitude in several continents so we trust very much this methodology so that's what we we had to share thank you very much for for your time i don't know if we if you want us to go more in depth with some of the questions here we have plenty of time for questions so feel free to um unmute yourself and and we can have a dialogue thank you so much um anna anna maria and gabriel that was a beautiful beautiful presentation um and i can see why you have such a um high um, response rate so audience over to you please put your um hand up so we can select oh mark mark would you like to unmute yourself and and ask the presenters Sorry, oh, no problem. Okay, that's yeah. all right. So yeah, regarding costs, well, currently we we don't have like a software as a service platform that you can manage for yourself. Not not yet. Uh, we have a a service in which you you provide us the questionnaire. We we program it in a couple of days. Then we run a pilot, which usually takes about a week. And after the pilot, we, we can start the data collection process. Then it, depending on how big is the sample, who are uh, the responses, what type of relationship you have with them, if they're not regular citizens or your clients, it's, uh, it's different, the, the, the data collection times. But it, I can tell you that we, we run a survey in Chile for the clients of a bank they they sent the link to 44,000 people and they got 9,000 surveys in a week. So it, it, uh, this is an example of, of what is possible. Also uh, through social media, we know that it can take uh, uh, between a week and a month, depending on the number of survey responses that you want. And here, there's another question about sampling methods um, any online question a uh, survey sorry a, a, any online survey is not a random uh, probabilistic survey you know so what we do to have a proper sampling is that we control quotes uh, or like uh, gabriel can you please answer this sure. question yeah. So when what we do is, um, of course, it depends on the on the customer and the research. Sometimes, if it's a causal research, they don't need a representative sample. Uh, and as Anna said, uh, an online survey it's going to be self-selected, uh, and that's the case if you use this platform, or if you use SurveyMonkey, or if you use your email, or whatever, um, or Google Forms. Um, but what we can do, and we do, is that we um, put minimum quotas to ensure the, uh, distribution of uh, on key demographics. And uh, we can also do post certification weighting that allows us to have a similar distribution on uh, demographics from our sample and the country or whatever geographical unit you uh, have. Uh, again, we don't only do online surveys. Uh, Although we haven't done anything in, you know, the Asia Pacific region, uh, uh, physically, we've only collected data online. But what we've done in in Colombia is, um, we can do sampling regular sampling methods with our platform. And what we also have done with one customer is that we um, provide the training and the um, 
design of our survey, and then you guys could provide the devices and the and, and the and the people to collect data physically um, wherever you need it as a, as a household survey or as an interception survey. Um, so that that could also be done. Uh, there was yeah, another here. question. Yeah, about the quotas, because I think it, there, it was a misunderstanding because we don't collect, uh, we, we, we don't do the pre-demographics before the survey on, on Facebook. We normally uh, uh, advertise to everyone and then we control the quotas in this dashboard. And uh, we we can we monitor how many adults uh, or I mean age groups or sex or uh, whatever quota you want to control. We do this while the the data collection process. Also, it's very interesting that sometimes we have um, target people not using Facebook service of targeting but through communication. For example, we launch an ad for everyone in a, in a region, but the message is, if you have been diagnosed with depression, Alzheimer, dementia, or any other uh, mental Ill illness, please uh, tell us how has been the experience during the pandemic. That was a real life example. We didn't have to like filter in Facebook, like please show this only to people who have mental illnesses, but through communication, people self-select themselves if they are um, interested. Mirna, you had a question about SMS survey data. Uh, could you clarify what that means? What is SMS survey data? Is, is this Mena? Would you like to unmute yourself? Huh. That's okay. Um, if you can just uh, answer my question through the chat, maybe I could answer better your own question. Uh, but in the meantime, we could, what, what we, we have done also in the past is that people, uh, clients through their communication means if they have an SMS, uh, through the SMS, they send a link to the survey and people can answer uh, access our platform and answer the survey there. Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question. So I'm not sure if you're thinking of these surveys that are like inside the SMS where you answer yes or no inside and that's different. Yeah, okay, yeah. So we could distribute that. Still, if there is no 3G or 4G, our cert platform does require some internet connection, connection. So the first moment of entry will take longer if it's a slow internet connection. Uh, when you did it, I'm, I'm assuming you it didn't take longer than, I don't know, 10 seconds, maybe 30 seconds if your internet was not that good. Uh, if, if you're doing it in a 2G network, it will take longer. I'm not sure how much, but it will take longer. And it will also take longer to send at the end when you're processing, it's going to take a little bit longer on, on sending. So that, that would be a problem, but you can use SMS to distribute the survey. Uh, the problem would be answering the survey. Yeah, but also sometimes in regions where, uh, for example, you have a social project in a rural area where there's no internet. What we've done is that we can install some devices which have our platform in the offline ver version because we have an offline version of the platform that can collect data with no internet at all. So uh, you can deliver some uh, smartphones to the project or the region, and there people can report uh, mo monitoring surveys or, or whatever data you need. But I yeah, and then they would have to come back and send it to our server or yeah at this. some point they have to come back to internet and upload everything that's that's correct that there was Go another ahead, question Jill. oh sorry i i'm trying to raise my hand um on the chat feature but i can't so i'm just gonna speak is that all right 
Sure. Okay, um, Anna or Gabriel, thank you so much. This is such an excellent presentation and very interesting. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Firstly is, can you put your um, URL on the chat so that I can, because I'm trying to find you online and I'm not sure if I've got the right website. But also the second one is in terms of cost, I'm really keen to find out like roughly how much would it cost? I know there's probably, we can probably get a quote or something for something specific, but just in general, if you could give us an idea, because I'm working for an, a government organization where we have a cost recovery model. And so when we are costing our evaluation or research um, projects, for instance, I need to be able to tell them this is how much it's, it's going to cost and this is how many days it's going to take. So if you can comment on that, that would be super helpful. Thank you. Well, it's, it's really complicated because it depends on the uh, sample size, uh, the way you're getting to people. If you already have their emails or their phone numbers, it must be cheaper than if we have to go out to social media to collect them. And as we haven't worked in Australia or New Zealand before, we, we don't know exactly how much it's going to cost. But I can tell you uh, our projects can range from like $1,000 to $50,000 or $100,000 $100, depending on the size uh, of, of the project. So it, it's very flexible and we always figure out ways to work um, very fast because that's a part of our philosophy. We, we're like a mixture of researchers and IT people. And we believe that uh, research should, should learn a lot of like startups and technology because they work faster, they work lean, and that's how we used to work. Yeah, thank you. Super helpful. It's very expensive, but <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it depends on, on things like questionnaire length survey yeah. size recruitment method of course so uh, if if you want to have a quote you just can t uh, email Ana maria there and yeah. uh, we'll figure something out uh, yeah great that, thank that, you that, that's benefits i think i'm just going to add one other comment i think the other thing too is good quality data doesn't come cheap no just of as course. a general rule you know yeah, with anything and that's always a challenge when we're talking yeah. to commissioners if yeah. you want decent data, you're going to have to pay for it. That's right. You get what you pay for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Kata, for saying that. I have a, I have a question. Um, have you used open-ended questions in any of your surveys? And then do you do like um, coding of that? And if so, how has that gone on your platform? a great question yeah we have we have done that it, it um that's very sometimes it's interesting what has happened usually we do this for the option other you know this question when they have yeah. this or that or other and then what what other and uh, it, it's it, it's interesting to to know what people are thinking about other and we normally use like this um, qualitative uh, unstructured methodologies to to analyze that. But you can't you can't um, see this information in the in the in the dashboard. It's not our specialty to to do to collect that type of information. But Thank it's you. possible. If I could answer a follow-up question to um, Marie, um, that was something I was thinking through earlier is there are so many different ways that you can approach how you structure a survey depending on what exactly it is you're trying to find out. Um, and so sometimes you have a very clear understanding of what, what, what you're dealing with. So it's quite easy to segment and identify a number of quite specific questions in the manner that you were describing earlier. I was wondering if there have been projects or contexts or situations that haven't lent themselves so well to this. Um, I'm thinking we might be a little bit more inductive discovery type 
work that would often, you know, which is can often happen with research as well. Yeah, keen to know about that. Yeah, um, if you want, and I can answer this. We we have we have had cases where um, we have to come back and forth between the client and in what they want, but also sometimes we have to go and do more than one pilot survey. So we run one pilot survey and we realize that a lot of people are skipping a lot of questions, for example, uh, that we're not capturing uh, what we want to capture because everyone is like answering one or two of the options and we're not, um, and, and we have had to do that uh, inductively. And I think you're right that, that that's just sometimes part of the research process when there is something that is complex and not so clear in terms, or uh, maybe it is clear, but it's not so easy for uh, the respondents to answer. You know, there's different reasons what that could happen, but that's why for us, the, the pilot stage of the process is mm. so important. We never skip that. Uh, we have on, always done it and, and we, 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 we take very seriously the analysis of the pilot data uh, because we believe it's key um, to get uh, good quality data to get uh, to have a good pilot. Thanks, Gabrielle. Looks like Marie, Marie might have accidentally exited the meeting. <laughs> yeah, maybe she's having connection issues. Um, so I don't know if anyone else has any other questions. We are um, really looking forward to hearing more from any of you. Uh, and I already. Um, yeah, I think Mar Marie is back. back. Yeah. Yeah. Do do not hesitate to to ask. We we can we we be happy to think about your project. As I told you before, we're not yet a software service. Maybe in the future we will be. Uh, but also, we we love like thinking about how can we leverage current technology to improve research and we really enjoy helping our clients to to find out better solutions to their problems so really thank you for this this space maria I, I, you're back i'm so sorry my internet connection this is one of my nightmares to have my internet <laughs> rock off during a meeting <laughs> or was an international seminar <laughs> Um, I was just going to say as well, it was lovely. I mean, I've seen a lot of people um, saying what a great presentation it is, and I, I, I agree. And I think one of the things that's a, a challenge for all of us who are, you know, got a deep roots and commitment to our research practice, knowing that we have to move with the times and some of the, I suppose, what we've been taught and we hold very close and aren't really you know find really hard to let go of it was it was I enjoyed listening to how uh, you guys have clearly wrestled with that and have figured out what to let go of or just to get more flexible with but um but still you know understanding that there's there's still that credibility and robustness that need you know you can't sort of throw the baby out with the bathwater um, yeah, so it was, I loved listening to that, whereas, you know, a typical marketing firm, I'm always a bit skeptical of, because it tends to be the easiest path, maybe not necessarily the best, um, and that's, you know, not to be unkind, but yeah, so I really enjoyed listening to uh, your particular perspective in that, um, in that way. Thank you, Cara. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I would yeah. like to, sorry, Gabriel, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna, uh, thank you, Kara. I, I was gonna say that we've been able to, using our, our new paradigm, we've been able to replicate in Colombia, for example, similar findings than uh, our census bureau on, on some topics, right? So it's not, it, 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 it is, we do something different, but we do believe in good data quality, and we do think it is important to actually capture what we want to capture. Um, so we don't, we don't, we we change things, but we don't uh, cut quality of our data.
Are there any more questions for Anna and Gabriel? There, you have a lot of new fans now, Anna and Gabriel. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have to think to move closer to, to Australia and New Zealand. <laughs> um, everything is possible virtually. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anna Maria and Gabriel, for your brilliant presentation. I found it extremely informative and it was a pleasure to um, watch, you know, it was a pleasure to, um, to um, understand your process, your data storage mechanisms, how you the findings display um, on someone's smartphone. Um, I think it's ingenious and also congratulations for um, your successful startup during COVID. You know, this is quite a, um, pioneering um, kind of effort to, to have a successful um, business um, during a lockdown and have it grow um, through the through the month. So congratulations for for your br brilliant achievement and um, we look forward to staying in touch. And this is um, thank you everyone for for attending and for your um, thoughtful and intelligent questions. Um, it really added some very good value and um, yeah, yes, this this is recorded and we will put it on YouTube. It normally takes about a month to upload it, but we'll try to get it up sooner and we will circulate the PowerPoints um, as well. So thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>